Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast. Did you know that plants are truly amazing? Not only can you grow them and eat them, you can also wear them, drink them, nourish your skin with them, and so much more. Let Ellen and Michael inspire you to love plants as much as they do, as they chat with the movers and shakers in this wonderful plant-based world. So, let's dig in. Florette carefully select their salad leaves to ensure a perfectly balanced mix. As sponsors of Series 8 of the podcast, Florette have something to suit everyone's taste, from mild to strong salad leaves in bags that can be recycled at supermarkets. So whatever deliciousness you are cooking, pair it up with the perfect salad and make it unflorettable. Hey guys, so today we are going to explore the amazing aloe vera plant and all of its uses. We'll be speaking with Frank Vestein from the Dr. Green Aloe Vera Farm about this superpower plant. Frank actually started at the company at just 13 years old and he's now a director of the company and he knows everything there is to know about aloe vera. So let's get started. Hi, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, welcome to the podcast. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd like before we start, I'd totally love to just set the scene for everyone listening at mm. home because mm. basically you're standing in front of rows and rows of aloe vera in the greenhouse. It looks amazing. What a fabulous yeah. place to be. Yeah, there are more than 500,000 plants in this greenhouse right now. More than 500,000 aloe vera plants. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So just, just a few. <laughs> yeah. Just a few. Yeah. Usually, well, when we do an interview, everyone's impressed by my background, but you completely yeah. upstaged me today. <laughs> yeah, you've yeah. been completely yeah. knocked out of the park, Michael. <laughs> so, uh, we'd just love to know, first of all, you know, about you, about your company, and just how you began specializing in the amazing plant that is aloe vera. So, a bit of history would be great. Yeah, I would like to tell that. Uh, I, I started working at the company when I was 13 years old. It was just a, um, a job for me after school. Wow. So uh, putting the plants in plugs and uh, uh, making clean and, and so on. Mm-hmm. And uh, after my school, I uh, started to work here full time. And uh, right now I'm the director of the company. Uh, the, the company uh, is um, started by uh, uh, Paid and his two sons um, uh, took over the, the company later. Mm-hmm. Um so that's a little bit history about me. Um, we 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 had a greenhouse with a lots of uh, different plants, uh, like uh, uh, hortensia, hydrangea, uh, strelitzia, calanguees. We had a really big assortment, um, but we want to specialize in one plant so the company um, uh, would be a little bit easier. Let's uh, let's let's say that. And. Um, yeah, we thought, okay, which plant do we choose? Because yeah, we have a lot of plants, and and which one we uh, want to do. So, um, and there was one special plant that uh, sometimes customers uh, call. Uh, sometimes customers call for that plant. Uh, they they ask us, uh, okay, can I eat the plant? Mm-hmm. And they were talking about aloe vera, and we get no calls from any plants. Only we get calls from aloe vera. So that's where we. We're thinking, okay, uh, we think this plant is uh, special, and then we have a, have a look in the plant. We 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 uh, read on the internet, and we saw that the uh, aloe vera is a super plant. It's a super mm-hmm. food. It's a super plant. It's good for your skin, for your hair. Um, so we thought, yeah, we we must do something with this plant because it has so much more than just a plant. So uh, and that's when we choose in 2019 to specialize in aloe vera. And uh, we just have now only one plant, and that's uh, that's it. In fact, you have five hundred thousand of them behind you. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you must be the only specialist aloe vera nursery in the Netherlands, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's, that gives that's you a right, competitive yeah. edge, which is brilliant as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I can say that we have the the most powerful and beautiful plant that mm-hmm. are there on the world. Yeah. <laughs> 
But um, yeah. I, we got a few more questions kind of to roll through. But I just want to ask before we go that far, there's there are some other other plants that have got similar properties to aloe vera, but aloe vera is really kind of the the strongest with everything because it's not just nutritional; it's medicinal as well, right? Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, I've been to mm-hmm. a lot of countries uh, where there were aloes grown mm-hmm. because aloe is a species with 400 species. Yeah, aloe vera is a synonym for aloe barbadensis miller. And some people say that the aloe barbadensis miller is the most powerful one. Mm-hmm. Only I've been to South Africa, and there in the nature grows the aloe ferox. Mm-hmm. And in South Africa, they say this is the most uh, powerful plant of uh, powerful aloe in the world. So I'm not sure. I think the aloe vera is um, they produce a lot of gel mm-hmm. when you compare it to other species, and that's for the uh, money better. So I think that's a little bit the story behind it. I think nobody has ever checked how many ingredients there are in the gel exactly. Okay. Because it's really, really expensive to, to check that. There are 300 mm-hmm. ingredients in the gel. Um, and it's really difficult to measure it. So mm-hmm. I'm not that's sure. Really, I, yeah, that, that's so interesting because like I, there's lots of different aloes. And I, I, sometimes people will say, oh, you know, I mean, I like to talk about healing properties of plants. And I will mention mm-hmm. aloe vera because it's just sort of it's top of the list. I think every single person should have an aloe vera in their home. Um, and some people will say, but there's lots of different aloes. How do I know I'm getting an aloe vera? Are all the aloes, you know, healing and medicinal and nutritional as well? Or is it just a few out of all of the aloes for like species? Um, some aloes don't produce a lot of gel. So you break the leaf open and there's no gel in it. So that's an easy answer. You you don't have anything. Um, uh, you You cannot use that plant, but there are... Um, more aloes that are that have gel in it. I I do not know how the uh, how powerful each species is. Mm-hmm. Um, but the most easy plant is aloe vera. Mm-hmm. Aloe ferox is also uh, easy to use, only it has uh, smaller leaves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I I don't know which one is more powerful. Um, I I'm not sure. No. Um. Do you know? Um. There were some uh, hieroglyphics from ancient Egypt, and it said that apparently Cleopatra apparently used to mix avocado with aloe vera and olive oil, and that would be her face mask. And she was oh, wow. meant to be one of the most beautiful women in the world. So there's clearly something in yeah. aloe that does absolute wonders for your skin. <laughs> yeah, that's that's completely true. Uh, I've heard that story as well. I wasn't there, so I cannot confirm it. <laughs> but um, um, but yeah, they they try to um, um, make make the same gel in a in like um, um, in a lab, but they mm-hmm. never have uh, they never uh, had uh, the same um, um, the same product they they cannot mm-hmm. reach the the power of aloe uh, um when they make it themselves so it's right. it's a really special uh mix that's interesting mm-hmm. isn't it plants are special now <clears throat> i can see all of those aloes behind you um do you sell aloes as a plant or and do you sell them in any other formats as well yeah we we sell them as a uh, as plants and we sell also the the leaves i have a leaf here for the for the uh, for the for the people that are it's um, gigantic. listening, so it's cool. gigantic. gigantic. Yeah, it's it's like sixty centimeters. There's there's three hundred milliliter uh, gel in this leaf, and um, yeah, you can just uh, take it off the of the um, take it off, and you you see here a very much gel in the leaf. Oh yeah, so and this is also what we sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sell the gel in tubs as well, or no? Only in uh, in in the leaf. Oh, only we believe in the leaf. that. Okay. Yeah, if if you keep it in the leaf, it's way more powerful than when you put it in a in a yeah. tube or in a in a. And in how long would that stay glass. fresh for? Do we need to this, keep it in the fridge when we receive it, or no? No, you no. can keep it out of the fridge. Okay. Um, this is like uh, eight weeks. Wow! But I've got also leaves that is not uh, cut. I've got a half year. 
Mm -hmm. It looks old. It won't. It won't get old. Yeah, and you can just uh, put the gel on your skin or hair yeah. directly out of the leaf. Uh huh. And, and that's also really, can, really powerful. You can obviously eat aloe. So if we wanted to use that in a smoothie or something, how would we? How would we do that? And do we get a lot of goodness from that gel as well by eating yeah. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, you. You have to clean the gel under the uh, water in the water. Out of the mm -hmm. crane, you show you let the water out of the crane, and you put the gel under the under the water. So the uh, the yellow, yeah. There's a on the inside of the leaf. There's some mm -hmm. yellow uh, stuff, and that's a little bitter of uh, taste. Okay. Um, and you want to to wash that off, and then you can eat the gel uh, safely. Okay, so basically you chop it up, but you then wash it before you use it. Yeah. So you so you get a spoon and you take it out of the leaf. Okay. And then you've got one piece of gel, you put that under the water, and then the, uh -huh. the aloina, the, the yellow aloina, is washed off. Okay. Uh huh. I quite often use it in the kitchen if I burn my fingers when I'm cooking, which is a continuous issue. I don't know how I do <laughs> it. Aloe vera that. genuinely helps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really good to, if, like, it's a minor burn. Or like a sting or a bite, even if you're outside, yeah. it really soothes it. It does make a really big difference. But also sunburn as well, right? It's good yeah. for sunburn because yeah. it's often in after sun, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But that's a tricky one because, yeah, um, yeah. sometimes they, 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 they take one out of the 300 ingredients out of the gel. Mm -hmm. And then they put a little bit in the, in the, in the cream. Yeah. And then they say aloe vera cream, you know, so uh -huh. it's a tricky one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But could I, if I had a leaf and I had sunburn, could I basically rub the leaf over my face? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. I will show you. Yeah. <laughs> we do it all the time. We do it all the time. So I've got here one piece and I, I put it right now on my skin. Yeah. That's cool. And That's will... why you have lovely skin. I can <laughs> see how lovely your skin is. It's because you have it on your face all of the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I reckon everyone at the nursery looks 10 years younger than anybody in like yeah. uh, the Amsterdam area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you come in, then you go a three years yeah. younger, so out of the greenhouse. Yeah. So there must be at the nursery, you must have like two areas, like obviously potted plants and an area where you harvest from as well, the big leaves. Yeah, we have a no. Yeah. We have a, a, um, a, like a partnership in uh, in Spain from a nursery that uh, uh, grown um, biologically the big leaves. Because in Holland to produce these leaves is mm -hmm. really complicated, um, and it's um, it's it's way more easier in Spain to do it than here. Mm -hmm. So the very big ones that come from Spain, and uh -huh. all the plants uh, are grown uh, here inside. Mm -hmm. But to, to come back at the question, uh, which mm -hmm. aloe should I take? Um, it's it's important to to check how it's grown. We mm -hmm. grow without any chemicals, and a lot of uh, pot producers use chemicals on the aloe. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you do not you do not want that on your skin. Mm -hmm. So that's a thing that uh, just uh, think about. Okay. Um, yeah, most pot plants are grown with some uh, chemicals to 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 grow them. So if you have a, like a disease or you have a, a animal that you don't want in the, in the greenhouse, mm -hmm. uh, most uh, greenhouses put chemicals on it, mm -hmm. but we do everything. Uh, we, we get that everything uh, biologically. So okay. that's really that's, good. That's, it's that's safe. Really yeah. It's safe to use. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. Cool. Actually, you know, at the end of the day, when, when we pick fruit and vegetables or edible flowers in any way, you always want to pick them without any chemicals on. So it's good, you know, mm. knowing that that's how you produce your aloe. Um, when you had that massive, big leaf full of the lovely gel, um, you can, you know, just take it off the plant, can't you? So like with a sharp knife, I guess just remove yeah. it from the plant. Um, and how how long will will that stem grow back, or is that the end of that kind of leaf? Will it grow uh, out? How, how does the plant react yeah. to chopping it off? Yeah, the you you uh, can take the 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 outside leaves, so the oldest leaves in the in the middle of the plant uh, grow mm -hmm. uh, the other way grows new leaves, and on the outside you can just take it off. And it will not grow back, but in the middle, it will grow new leaves. Okay. Yeah? And you can just put 
um, you, you chop it off, and this is like a, a cucumber. It it get a little bit um, uh, dry. Yeah, like a millimeter is is a little bit dry then, and mm-hmm. then the rest is still fresh, it's like a cucumber. If you cut a cucumber, mm-hmm. it's the same. Yeah. Okay. So you can okay. use this for a very long time, and most of the users, uh, they they uh, put this in the in the bathroom, and every night they take a little, um, little bit of the leaf, they put it like a night cream, yeah, and then the next day they take a take a take another shot of the like take the, another slice. Gonna do that. Right, yeah. I, yeah. This is very yeah. unorthodox for our podcast, but I'm literally going to take my laptop with me because I want to show you something. I'm and in the meantime, while I move through my house and hope I don't eat, lose the signal, uh, do you have any advice and tips for people growing aloe vera at home? And the reason mm. why I'm asking you that, I hope I don't lose the signal because I'm going to show you my aloe vera. My aloe vera. Here, here oh, that's is. a really good oh. specimen. That's super nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's really super good. nice. <laughs> um, and it's completely neglected also, which is why yeah. tips would be great. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, first of all, my compliments, because the, the plant looks really great. Yeah. And he, 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 uh, he, he's, he's grown on a little st- a stem, like a, is that an English word? Stem? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think you have uh, already got some leaves from the stem, right? Yeah, uh, for when I bear my fingers in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that happens like uh, five hundred times already. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the, the aloe wants uh, a lot of sunlight. With a lot of sunlight, he can grow uh, well, and he he don't uh, need uh, a lot of water. Only if you want to use a lot of gel, you can give him more water because if you give him lots of water, the gel will also be more in the leaves. So, hmm. but I think you are doing really great. Most of the plants fall out, like uh, the 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 leaves will will go um, to to all the yeah. How do I say that? Yeah, uh, they get a bit um, top heavy and they fall over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh-huh. that's because they get too less sunlight and too much water. Mm-hmm. So, because I had one at home and actually got rid of it because it just wasn't happy at all. And it was turning red a lot. It was never this happy green color that Ellen's is. Is that because yeah. there was too much sun or it was too dry or what, what was happening? Yeah. Yeah, it's really difficult to say that uh, from here because the, uh, the place of the plant is, is important. Only the red tops, mm-hmm. you see that all the time here in the greenhouse yeah it's not a really big problem if you give them more water okay it will it will be green they just yeah, very like two weeks. i wonder if i just was not giving it enough attention generally in terms of water so yeah, yeah. but but for the it's not really bad for the plant you just mm-hmm. give them more water and it will turn green again so mm-hmm. you can a little bit um yeah, try it yourself. Give a little bit more water, it's getting more mm-hmm. green. Give a bit, a little bit less water, it's getting red again. So, yeah, we do that all the time in the greenhouse. Okay, that's good. Basically, to know. Michael, you need to talk to your plants. Like I talk <laughs> to my plants. You know, I tell, I say hi in the morning. How you doing? Aren't you beautiful? You need to have a little chat with them. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, would you grow aloes outdoors in the summer? Because they could be a nice container plant mixed with other plants. Is that a nice idea? Yeah, it's an idea, but in Holland it's it's um, yeah cold in the winter. Mm. Um, so and if it's freezing, the the plant will be dead in like yeah. one day. But as a summer a summer plant, it could work. Yeah, but yeah, I think uh, when it rains, it get too much water. So mm. yeah, okay, I will keep it in yeah. the greenhouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. True. <laughs> what about? Um, is there any way you can use, like, I guess you could make your own hand cream with aloe, or could you make any, like, do you ever make any recipes or anything with them apart from? Yeah, we got a, like this? we got a lot of recipes on the on our website, mm-hmm. uh, okay. drgreen.nl, and yeah. Um, yeah, we we got recipes for skin problems. Uh, yeah, we you can mix it with cocos oil, uh, okay. or with honey, or with, uh, uh, or, yeah, with all kinds of oils. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and and you just mix it up, and uh, we have also um, a recipe with avocado and cocos oil. 
Okay. Yeah, that's really good for uh, for your skin. It's that's a really nice uh, recipe. Yeah. I I'm gonna so make you it. would just mix it up with coconut oil and then kind of and then rub it on like on your skin. Yeah, anyway. and, and with and with avocado, it's it looks like uh, guacamole, uh, <laughs> but it's a really nice uh, nice skin mask. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Gonna so you can what? be like Cleopatra at home, just growing your own yeah. aloe vera. What about in terms of eating it? Is there any like special recipes for eating it? I guess you can add to no. a smoothie, of course. After yeah, you, you can add it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You you need to wash off the bitterness. Yeah. Um, and they say like thirty centiliter per day as a maximum. It's like a shot glass. Okay. Uh, that that's that's enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I know you can buy aloe vera in uh, bottles, can't you? To you can add it into like a, I guess a smoothie, or you can mm. just drink it as it is, can't you? What do you think? What yeah. does it taste like? What what yeah. what, is it, what is it like? It's yeah, it's. I think it's not uh, very bad in taste. Only you need to to really check the ingredients because if you have an aloe vera drink, that's really nice to drink. It's it's no way that's uh, that's uh, natural, you know. Mm. So they add sugar or they add all kinds of stuff that is not so good for your health. So, yeah, some people think it's really gross to drink. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's just natural taste. Mm. Um, it's not bad. It's not bad. Only that's yeah, not really nice. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not delicious, yeah, it's, but it's not. It's delicious. not delicious. It's not delicious, uh-huh. but yeah, it's like thirty centiliters. So you have just a shot, and that's it. Yeah, I think yeah. it's no problem if it's good but for it your health. I think you should you. do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you just know it's so good for you. So I think you can handle a little shot of aloe vera for sure. Um, yeah. It's yeah. been really good chatting with you. Can you um, tell us, apart from your website, which you mentioned, um, or maybe mention that again, and uh, where it be, where our listeners can find you online as well on social media, for example? Yeah. Uh, our, our Instagram, uh, you can follow it, Dr. Green Aloe Vera. Yeah. Uh, our website is drgreen.nl. Uh, we're working on, a, on an English version. So uh, if we have a little bit of time, we can, uh, we can make it. And uh, yeah, you can uh, see all our products, but you can also uh, see the recipes we have. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a really informative site. So if you want to uh, um, have some tips uh, for the growing of the aloe vera, we have all kind of pictures with explanations on it. Um, and I think if you if you just put the translator of uh, of, of uh, like Google on it, you yeah. you have a lot of information there. So yeah, that we've works. also information about the gel. We have information about the the small cuttings. They're like the small baby plants. So it's it's really nice to uh, to look at. Mm-hmm. And you're selling the plants wholesale into nurseries across Europe. Would would we ever see them yeah. in the UK? Do they have a label on saying Dr. Green? Uh, no, not yet. No, no. Uh-huh. no. But um, we 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 started this uh, this business like two years ago, mm-hmm. uh, like the Dr. Green part, mm. and um, we want to first uh, build a brand by only deliver them directly to the consumers. Mm-hmm. So we have the contact with the client. We've got a lot of uh, questions in our WhatsApp. Uh, how can I use it? Is it good for uh, eczema? Is it good for uh, uh, all kinds of diseases? And we're really learning how we use the uh, plant on the right way. And maybe later we will um, sell also Dr. Green to the wholesalers. But first, we want to do it uh, slowly, uh, slowly uh, and good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And people can order the leaves and receive them through the pay- post. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. super cool. Or I'm going to use some of Ellen's leaves. She's got far too many on her plants. Hey, you're going to be here tomorrow. I'll let you take yeah. a leave if you like. But to- I tonight, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep tonight with a face pack of aloe vera yeah. all over me in the hope that I wake up in the morning more youthful. <laughs> yeah. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. If you okay. put 10 days every night, yeah. a little bit aloe vera directly yeah. from the plants on your skin. Mm-hmm. And definitely your skin will look uh, more healthy. All I've right. seen it so many times. If you if you use it for 10 days straight, I'm I'm sure you will see some uh, some results. Mm-hmm. It's it's like it's not like a magical uh, wonder thing that you put one time on your skin and then everything is fixed. It's like if you use it mm-hmm. for 10 days, uh, you really, really see some uh, some difference. It's really good to, to see every time. Yeah. 
Cool. Thank you. I'm going to do it. The challenge is set. 10 days of aloe vera on my face. I will report (laughs) back in 10 days. (laughs) Nice, nice. Take the before and after picture. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's cool. Thank you very much. (laughs) Yeah, thank you very much for joining us on the podcast. Thank you. Yeah, thank you too for for your time and interest. Uh, I really like that. So uh, thanks a lot. Cool, no worries. We'll catch you soon and I'll try and visit in uh, two weeks as well. You really should do that, yeah. Defo. Hello everyone, it's Sophie here from Old House of the Shires with a little flowery update from my Wiltshire garden. So after the drought, of course, we get rain. I think your rain dances worked because we have lots. Suddenly the dahlias have all decided to flower and I'm really enjoying the pink ones, particularly, which are strawberry cream, arbitax, sweet natalie, and of course, my very favourite, which is cafe au lait. The cosmos are very late to start, but keep cutting and they will come again. Some other little jobs I've been doing, I've been weeding and I will um, do my last treatment of nematodes for the season, which will help reduce slug numbers over the winter into next spring. I'm sowing hardy annuals as well and I've been sowing ami, cornflowers, syrinthi, nigella, um, antirhinums, had to think then, gypsophilia, candy uh, tuft and scabious and they will give us new lovely flowers early in the season next year. So hardy annuals now and you might be able to even plant some out because some are hardy down to minus five. Just check your packets. And in the next few weeks I will take my Orlea and Larkspur out of the freezer and also sow those. And it's sweet peas. I can't believe I'm saying that but yes sweet peas and if you follow me on Instagram you know I don't really like sweet peas but I do always sow them anyway that's my flowery update and well have a lovely rest of September it's going to be a lovely month in the garden take care Floret are a farmer owned cooperative passionate about what they produce and sponsor of the plant-based podcast Grown by a network of local farmers who work to bring you the tastiest salads of the highest quality. So how will you make your dish unflorettable? Hello everyone. Hi, it's Ellen Mary. This may sound a little bit different to usual. Can you hear that? No? Oh, it's quieter. (laughs) So Michael and I haven't been able to get together this week to do a gossip. And (laughs) that's why it's quieter. (laughs) Because he obviously says so much more than me and I just sit and I let it all happen. (laughs) But we decided to do our gossip separately. So you've got me first. And then after after I ramble on a little bit for you, then uh, Michael will be here with an update on what he's been up to and what he's doing. So I feel a little bit like I'm the warm-up act. (laughs) That's a story of my life. I'm the warm-up act for something much bigger to come. (laughs) And um, I'm actually recording this on the very day that we lost Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And, you know, on the podcast, we don't really ever delve into politics or anything that's going on in the world we always want to keep it nice and light and happy and positive but we have both agreed that it would be disrespectful to just not mention how seriously sad we are um, about her passing you know the queen is that she's um the patron of the rhs um i've I stood for hours and hours outside the gates of the Chelsea Flower Show some years ago just to catch a glimpse of the Queen driving by into the show. And when I was young, I used to live in a town called Galston on Sea in Norfolk and she came through in the car. All the streets were lined with everyone waving their flags and I was there and I caught a little glimpse of her there, of her there then as well. But over... You know, the years that she has been this amazing female leader and queen of, you know, the Commonwealth, 
She was a lover of gardens and gardening. You know, she used to tour around all of the RHS gardens. Of course, she has uh, her own gardens at her property. She was a big lover of nature as well. And I know, of course, King Charles, I think he's the third. King Charles III, I think now, he has a a really strong support of um, the environment and gardening as well, which is really great to hear. Um, And also, if you um, visit the um, Wisley Garden, RHS Wisley Garden, um, the Queen and Prince Philip planted a beech tree there. It's in uh, the Jubilee Arboretum. I think it was back in 2007. Um, He planted a Chinese dogwood called the Wisley Queen. So you can go along to RHS Wisley and and, and pay your respects perhaps perhaps at that point that very tree. Look, I'm lost for words. I genuinely shed a tear. Um, genuinely shed a tear earlier on. I must also say I'm completely jet lagged as well. I was on an overnight flight back from the US, landed in the UK today, I haven't eaten all day. Then I got home to the news of the Queen and uh, now I'm stumbling over my words because <laughs> I'm equally emotional as I am jet lagged. Anyway, thank you very much to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II for her service. And now, uh, other things will resume on the podcast. So I just wanted to update you all on uh, what I've been up to. I've been over in the States these last few weeks. It's been hot and it's been muggy and it's been absolutely lovely. I've been able to visit some amazing gardens and get my balcony tidied up. I know we often talk about uh, I have to leave my balcony plants to my husband, but it seems he's doing a better job than previous years. So there's always hope. Maybe he's finding his green fingers after all. But there's lots going on on the balcony and I sat for hours throughout the course of about two and a half weeks trying to catch photographs of hummingbirds that visit the balcony and I didn't ever get the best shots but I did get some good shots and they're on my camera a Nikon DS3500 if you want a good camera for taking decent photographs and what did I do? I forgot to bring it back to the UK with me so no one's going to get to see those photographs now until I go back Uh, a little later in the year. (laughs) But anyway, in the meantime, while I was there, I was busy, busy um, finishing off the the final touches to my new venture, which is called People Plants Wellbeing. I know that some of you... um, will already be following it. But if you check out People Plants Wellbeing on Instagram and also the website, peopleplantswellbeing.com, you'll find out what I've been up to. So everything I do is about connecting people with plants and like the well-being power of um, that connection with the natural world, that kind of thing. And it's taken a while, but we finally expanded People Plants Wellbeing, which was a wellbeing studio on my own website, into a standalone business. So I'm really excited. I'm going to call it PPW for short, so I don't have to keep um, saying the words over and over again. We're providing wellness services, so that's wellness uh, retreats. So I've got, I cannot wait to announce the retreats. I've got some retreats coming up where you can uh, either day retreats or two or three night treat retreats away, talks, all kind of different things. Um, you know, just allowing you to take some time off for yourself, but all plant based. So it will all be about nature, being in nature, forest bathing, mindful gardening all kinds of things. If it rains, we might even dance in the rain. All of that kind of stuff. Uh, Wellness coaching as well, which is one-to-one coaching, um, helping you find, uh, you know, how to better exercise and look after yourself and talking about relationships, career, nutrition, but all with plants at the core, which is really exciting. Um, And also corporate well-being. So helping uh, companies with their well-being strategies and providing uh, talks and plans for them as well. So I'm working with a number of different uh, health coaches and um, nutritionalists and all and fitness uh, PTs, all kinds of things to bring that together, uh, which is so exciting. And yes, can you believe it? Finally, how many years are we doing the podcast? Four, four or five years, I think we've been recording the plant based podcast. Finally, there's a spin off show. Yeah, I'm like Joey from Friends. <laughs> So People Plants Wellbeing has its own podcast. It's all about well-being. Uh, so it's inspirational stories, uplifting vibes, well-being tips and advice uh, to help you find your magic through the power of plants. And 
It goes without saying that Michael has to be on this podcast at some point. (laughs) So you can find that. There's an introductory episode at the moment, but there will be more coming out. Um, You can find it in all good uh, podcast uh, platforms. And if you want to find out where it is under categories, it's under self-improvement and well-being, that kind of thing. So it's all wellness through the power of plants. So that's really exciting. Uh, loads of stuff coming up. Mostly I just cannot wait to announce the well-being treats. I am very, very excited about that. And I don't know, uh, I haven't actually mentioned this to Michael yet, interestingly, uh, but I'm hoping that he might come and provide a workshop on one perhaps. <laughs> we'll see. I'll see what I can uh, entice him to do. I'm sure he will. Um, So yeah, that's what I've been busy doing really, Uh, trying to get all of that sorted. I would love it if you would uh, follow us on Instagram. And also if you would like more information about um, the wellbeing retreats or coaching or anything, then head over to the the, website peopleplantswellbeing.com, fill in the contact us page. details and submit the form and uh, we can subscribe you to the newsletter Uh, it's once a month so you won't get bombarded with information but lots of well-being tips and advice and ways to look after yourself and news of what's coming up in the world of finding your magic through the power of plants so that's really really exciting now uh, as I have not been back in the UK long and I am completely exhausted I am going to finish up here and let Michael do all the talking because that's normal for the podcast anyway. (laughs) But I I will just say one thing before I go away. I've just noticed I'm sitting in my lounge looking around and I have tons of houseplants here. I've been gone for almost three weeks and they've been watered once. So they were watered the day before I left. My mum's watered them once and now I'm back. I haven't watered them yet. And they are all completely fine. So you know how we say we kill plants with kindness because we overwater them? That's 100% true. I can't see one single plant at all that has had any issues with not being watered for that long. There you go. (laughs) That's my tip. (laughs) Don't kill your plants with kindness is that old one. (laughs) Anyway, I am leaving you now with Michael. I'm sure he's got (laughs) lots of news to, to tell you all about as he always does. I'm already going to apologise if he swears because I'm not there to tell him off. (laughs) And also just to let you know that Michael did have to record part of his gossip section in the car. He is a very busy bee, you know, so he's a great at multitasking. No, he wasn't driving at the time, (laughs) but he was parked up and he had to record at that time or otherwise you wouldn't hear his voice at all. So forgive him for that. But believe me, he's still talking sense. (laughs) See you soon. Hey guys, welcome to an individual gossip. Ella Mary and I found it really impossible to make our diaries match this week, so we've done separate gossips. So Ellen has been broadcast first, so I'm her, um, I guess she's my intro act, isn't she? She's the griff to my Dua Lipa. Hmm, I wonder who'll get that cultural reference, huh? Uh, so, how are we all? All good, I hope? Um... It's a tumultuous world, of course, but as usual on the plant-based podcast, we don't talk about those sort of things. We keep it light-hearted, happy, kind of upbeat and very positive. So what's been happening? I've been at Kew Gardens this morning, uh, been to the opening of the new Science Kitchen Garden. Really honoured to be asked. Um, yeah, I'm getting invited to press events these days. I feel like a grown-up. I'm nearly 43 and I still feel like I'm late 20s or something. Oh my gosh. Do you know, it's really hard to kind of chat wildly like this and not have Ellen kind of laughing at my jokes or kind of mocking me, etc. So, yeah, I miss her being here. Hmm. So anyway, this uh, Science Kitchen Garden is like where they're uh, researching, exploring, looking for new crops, kind of developing stuff. Really, really interesting. So much to learn there. It's obviously open to the public. The public can see all the successes and all the fails as well yeah it's a really really cool thing and i would really recommend visiting this if you are in london at some point or maybe take a special trip 
to London just to go to Kew because it is always worth it. So what else has been happening? Uh, I replanted my garden with Cal and Choey because, of course, I came back from Holland and everything was burnt to a crisp. It was disappointing, but even if I'd been there, I don't think I would have been wanting to water the garden excessively anyway. It would have felt a little bit wasteful. So I think this was going to happen anyway. Um, I'm recording this in a Starbucks car park, and a guy has just walked in looking like the Matrix. He's got some massive coat on. He looks... It looks really strange. I don't usually want to judge people's dress sense, but it does look unusual because not only is it long, like a massive trench coat, but it's kind of a little bit shiny as well. I wonder if he's a kind of overlord or something like that. So anyway, just to set the scene, there's also a couple of guys in high vids. Generally, I fancy guys in high vids, but not today. Um, An old couple who are probably on their way back from, I don't know, Cornwall or something like that. Uh, Yeah, so just to set the scene at this Starbucks by the A3, because I'm on my way to Altex tonight to do their uh, weekly, no, yearly event. Uh, They're quite excited about me visiting, so I hope I don't disappoint them. Uh, But no, so that should be pretty cool. Uh, What else have I been up to? Um, I've been playing with some new Begonias. Uh, Space Stars series, a new series you can use indoors or outdoors, a kind of Rex type. Put them in some mega cool containers, so I hope you like those as well. Um, I've been doing a really cool lasagna planting as well. Uh, that's gone really well, and I'm going to put the video probably on uh, Sunday. So you see that on Sunday evening on Reels. Um, ooh, what else? Gardeners World. I've uh, filmed with Gardeners World for the magazine, some really unique containers. So that's been a really fun thing to do. So, yeah, we're coming to the end of the summer. It's still kind of warm, but I do feel today it's raining, so I feel we're probably at the last of the warmer weather, I'd say, which is a relief for my houseplants because houseplants, yeah, of course they grow, but you need to water them more in the height of the summer, don't you? Which is kind of, you know, I'm not into plant maintenance too much, but you know how it goes. Um, I've just uh, launched a new brand kind of collaboration with Timberland actually which is very cool and we've got a couple of workshops next week in London Carnaby Street and I'll be building terrariums and I will be doing balcony planting as well so that's going to be really really fun so really pleased to be involved with that oh the the matrix is back I wonder if he's ready to go into another dimension or just the BP shop who knows um anyway I'm not sure what else to talk about, really. It's like, when I haven't got Ellen to bounce off, I'm just kind of, um, just talking, talking, really. What else shall I tell you about? I I did a really cool green screen thing today. That was pretty cool. Uh, quite unusual as well. Um, plants. Talk about plants. Talk about the episode, Michael. Aloe vera. It's all about aloe vera. I was very lucky to visit the nursery myself a couple of weeks after we did the Zoom interview and mixed up some of those potions for my face. And... I'm sure I at least look two months younger, I would say. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, Yeah, we made some face packs as well. It was really cool to learn about the properties of aloe vera. And it's it's strange because we often would just reach for a cream or a a potion or something we bought in super drugs or something and feel like that is superior to the real plant. But how can that be? Because the plant is the pure thing. How could the cream that is manufactured with all sorts of additives possibly be better? So, yeah, I've been blending up aloe vera, putting it on my face as well. (laughs) The worst thing is it leaves a bit of the debris when you put too much on, so then it looked like I had dandruff for the rest of the day, coming from my face, not from my hair. So, (laughs) But no, that was a really, really cool episode. Um, You've also got our contributor, our old house in Shire, giving us seed sowing advice as well. It has... Quite, not quietened down, but it has cooled down a bit now, which means that you probably will be able to do some of those awesome sowings as well. So, gosh, I haven't got anything from seed for years. <gasps> Last time I tried was with dancing plants, but I'm away too much. So I can't travel with my seeds. It's really difficult to do. But Carl Q- Cooper at Turn It Tropical was growing some on my behalf. and We split a deal and said um, kind of when they grow, you have half, I'll have half, and that's kind of your your payment for growing them for me. So, But I think there's only one left, so we might have to have a mud wrestle to see who, who gets that last seedling. <laughs> um, so we're at the end of the QVC shows. 
So there's nothing to tell you about there. We'll be restarting the season in 2023. Um, myself, along with Mark Lane, um, Emma Real Davis as well, who was at this Q event. Oh, she is the cutest, honestly. But I, I feel that the same way about Emma Real Davis as I do about Ellen. I feel like she's kind of like a cute little younger sister who I just want to like take the mick out of all the time and like trip up and walk in front of. Which is not cruel, it's just a uh, kind of a cute thing. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening, Emma, that is you I'm talking about, my darling. <laughs> but it's because of this uh, press event today, Q press event, um, Cloud Garden was there, uh, Nile Gardens, I met him and we went in together. Uh, Village Grapevine, never met him in real life before. Louise Midgley, always great to see her as well. She gave me a double hug as well, that's quality. Um, yeah, and sometimes it's so nice when you've sort of known someone on Instagram, then you meet them in real life. You kind of have that little bit of continuity, which is kind of nice. And I think that kind of lubricates things, lubricates things a little bit. Like people talk about the bad side of social media and websites, but I think there's a really nice kind of way that that accessorizes our lives, you know? So, uh, she goes, she was there with Mike Keen Cooks. It's, um, oh, again, th- th- there's people on my list that I never get enough time to spend with and chat to and they're kind of on that list um someone else on that list is boyd douglas davis so if you're listening i've never sat down and chatted to you long enough also nat porter she's on my list of wanting to chat to more in fact most of you ypha as well um uh, young people's horticultural association if you don't know uh yeah so uh yeah i'm gonna write that list actually it's gonna be like a bucket list but a bucket list of people i want to chat to yeah, I'm going to do that, actually. Um, I want to tell you, actually, I'm, I hope Ellen hasn't been shy, and I hope she's plugged her new podcast in her gossip, which is uh, on before mine on this episode, because she's just started the People Plants Wellbeing podcast, which I, I like to call kind of like a, an offshoot of a plant-based podcast or a branch, uh, however you want to refer to it as, almost like when... Um, when Brookside had those weekend editions and they put them out on DVD or um, the Colby's, was that part of Dynasty? Something like that. So yes, yeah, so I'm really, really proud for her. It comes out on Wednesdays and it will be kind of along the lines of people plus well-being. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know the strap line already. <laughs> um, it probably means that now that Ellen's got a solo podcast as well, that I should kick my bottom into gear because I've always thought about doing a Plant Geeks podcast. Something that is kind of drilling down into plants just that little bit more. And I think that would be, yeah, I just need to sit down and do it and start it. Because plant-based podcast, we're very general about plants. So I want to kind of take it down to, you know, talking to breeders, product developers, kind of stuff that is purely about uh, the plants we grow. Not necessarily all the different other elements of it as well. And and Ellen knows before you grasp me up. So don't go telling her or anything you lot, troublemaker. Um, but I have started Substack. Now, this is a sort of paid newsletter, and I'm doing it as a new kind of experiment, just to see how it goes, kind of chit-chat about new plants, new developments, new trends. So if you want to subscribe to me on there, um, send me a message on social media and ask me what the link is, because I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. Jen, where are you? Help me. <laughs> okay, well, that's about it for my little solo gossip. Ellen, I must say, I did miss you. It's, um, even though I talk more than you, it's nice when you're here to bounce off. Anyway, so enjoy the episode. Enjoy your week. Uh, see you next week with the news and the gossip. Bye-bye. <laughs> The music for the Plump Ace podcast is part of the song Grow by Mikey James. And our editor is Gareth Patch of Semi Echo. (laughs) 